friends. I hope y'all are doing well. Welcome to our homestead in the Ozarks. If y'all are brand new, my name is Jessie. If you happen to like my content and want to see more of it, I'd greatly appreciate if you'd give it a subscribe. It helps me so, so much, especially being a brand new channel. If you come to the end of this video and liked it, I would very much appreciate a like. And I absolutely love hearing from y'all. So if you would like to leave a comment below, that would be much appreciated too. I always do my best to get back to you. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen that we officially announced the birth of Miss Iris June. If you like to see a little bit more of our personal day-to-day -day lives and get updates as to when I will be posting on gear, you can give me a follow at, at Ozarks Dwellers on Instagram. All that said, let's get into today's episode. Today, I am revealing to you the actual construction side of the nursery, as well as one of my favorite features. Also with spring just around the corner, I've been feeling the itch to do a little bit of organization. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite organizational tips. And finally, if you love the appeal of original artwork, but don't want to pay the crazy price tag for it. I'm going to show you the simple way to take your printed pieces and turn them into original replicas. All right, let's get started. If you've watched me for any amount of time or even followed me on Instagram, you are already well aware that Lola and I absolutely love to bake and will take advantage of any excuse to do so. The boys normally have their own request, but this time around, I had my own ideas of what we would bake. Speaking of, we actually have plans to make a couple more pans today as these little treats last no time in our house. If you are a fan of shortbread cookies, these are the absolute best. I don't know if it's the recipe or the pan, I just know that they are the best shortbread cookies I have ever had. And for somebody who's trying to get back into their pre-postpartum jeans, they are not helpful, but man, they are so stinking good. This is not at all a sponsorship or paid collaboration, but I consider y'all my friends and with my friends, I like to share the wealth. So I'm linking the name of this company and the pan below. When you receive the pan included are the directions on how to use it as well as quite a few shortbread recipes. And there's a little bit of added bonus content because anything good begins with a good bake. We'll get back to this in a moment. For now, let's head up to the nursery. So if you were here for last week's episode, then you remember the dresser that we happened to snag at one of our favorite antique fairs. If you were wondering how that little wonder has been put to use, look no further. Okay, let's take a one more quick look back of this catch-all of a room before it was turned into a nursery or at least the nook anyway. That is the portion we'll be focused on in this video. I can't wait to reveal the rest of the room, but here it is. So as I was sharing in our last video, this was an awkward little cubby area. I say little, it's actually quite large. It's even bigger in person than it appears in the video, but it actually is storing one of our HVAC units. When we built the house, for me visually, this was just the best solution for it. This room had sort of become a catch-all room and it did not have a closet. So I decided I wanted wanted to build some sort of shelving unit and I wanted it to look like it had been there forever. Not that it was 
was a second hand solution, but rather a part of the original plan. I accomplished this by adding a bit of drywall with an arched feature at the top and I feel like it turned out pretty well. You will see later on why I chose this arch. It ultimately tied all the major foundational pieces of the room all together. For the color, I wanted to go with a neutral as normal. It's no surprise I did go with a white tone, but this actually has a little bit of gray to it. There is a slight variation between the molding and the wall color, and it to me is just a really beautiful combination. I did also do something very special on the ceiling. That is something that is to come, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, going back to the actual shelving unit, I knew I wanted to use cedar. The problem was we weren't able to find any planks that were wide enough and long enough, but it had just so happened that our contractor came across a tree salvage company that was just about to salvage a fallen tree. Luckily, he was able to catch him before he had actually started cutting it apart and asked him to save planks large enough for the size that we were needing. A little backstory and what makes these planks so, so special. So I was raised by my mother and grandmother and we had a favorite place that we would visit often. It was our escape. It was just a place that was very near and dear to my heart. And it just so happens that the tree had fallen in that exact area. If you happen to catch my last Christmas video, you'll know that I lost both of them during the holidays last year. So having a piece of the place that we held most dear to all of us, it just brings so much peace to my soul. And it's almost as if I have a little piece of them with me. The best part of it is when you round the top portion of our stairs, you are immediately greeted with that undeniable scent of fresh pine that the planks give off and it is just the best. Just as rewarding as seeing the construction side of your design come together is finally being able to decorate it. This final layer is kind of like the icing on the top of the cake and as far as I'm concerned, nothing is better than the icing. Whenever I am decorating shelves, I always like to start with what I call the foundational pieces. To put it simply, whatever is largest is placed first. Essentially, I like to group like items together, be it color or size, and place those items onto the shelving unit at the same time. The idea is that I'm creating layers and by doing it this way, I'm ensuring that I've got an overall balanced look and nothing ends up being too heavily weighted visually on one side. In this case, the largest baskets went first. I do my best to make sure that as many decor pieces as possible are functional. In this case, these baskets serve as storage. And because I have more plants than I know what to do with, plant shopping took place within the house instead of at the stores. quite sure if Irish June is anything like me, these shelves will have their fair share of rearranging and changing, but for now, I am quite happy with the way that they turned out. And while we can't be positive, 
I am pretty sure she is too. I'm not sure what it is about spring, but whenever any of the seasons change, I always feel inspired to follow suit as far as the house is concerned. Spring just reminds me of newness and freshness, so whenever it comes around, I always feel encouraged to create the same atmosphere within the house. I always like to tackle my projects within areas or sections. So for today, we are turning to the linen closet. I have these two places within the home that tend to inevitably get cluttered over and over again no matter how many times I reorganize them. Speaking of the under the stairs project, I am super excited about that. Visually, it's going to be a massive change. We're going to do some painting. We're going to really do a big transformation. As far as I'm concerned, it's a lot easier for me to keep things clean and clutter free if the space is visually appealing. So that is one project that is on the docket, but for this one, it's a little bit more simple but the tips I'm about to share with you are applicable throughout any organizational project that you may be attempting. So getting started before I approach any organizational project I begin by pulling every single piece out of the area. It may seem like a bit much but I personally think that it is a lot easier and you're able to see all the pieces that you are dealing with. After all the items have been removed I begin separating them into piles. No matter what area I'm organizing the piles are always the same. For items that are still in good condition but I don't see myself using at all in the future I create a section to be donated. Those that have seen better days and are now unusable can either be trashed or recycled so I create a grouping for that. For some reason unfinished knitted and crochet projects as well as random decor pieces always seem to end up in this particular area. Items such as these that don't belong in the location that you are reorganizing are grouped together and later rehomed. And of course there's the grouping for everything that needs to stay. Lastly I go through the house and find any items that need to be relocated back into the place that I am organizing. In this case, the colder season will be drawing to a close, so I am taking out any of my colder weather decor pieces or blankets and I am tucking them away. All these items will soon be replaced with other things that are more in accordance with the spring. I will of course be documenting all this, so look out for this in future videos. I am quite excited about those things to come. So when it came to returning all that belonged back into the closet, I separated them into like items. I think this is one of the areas where I had originally been failing. The mess just kept recreating itself. The idea that every item has a home no matter what it is in any organizational task really helps in consistently staying organized. One thing I did add, you can see at the top, is storage. In there, I tucked away any seasonal linens and blanket. Side note, I'm a really big fan of vacuum sealed bags. For pieces that will only be used once a year, they're really great for space saving. You can see when it came to putting things back, I paired like items together. All sheet sets were put on top of each other. I then stacked them together based on their sizes. Twin sheets were all paired with twin sheets, kings were paired with the kings, quilts had their own section, and so on. I wouldn't call this a completely necessary task, but anything that makes life a little easier is worth it in my book. Okay, while well we are wrapping up our dessert, and as that is popped into the oven, let's move on to our final project. I absolutely love changing out artwork throughout the house, 
at any time of the year. I also am a massive fan of original abstract paintings. Vintage, of course, is my favorite. That said, these items can be really hard to find and honestly, they can be quite pricey. The great thing is there are now a million and one sites who offer vintage PDFs for purchase at a really low price. It's quite exciting as there is an endless array of options you can choose from. In my opinion, the most important part in the process of printing off your PDF is the paper that you're using. I normally choose a handmade cotton-based paper. The textural element of the paper really creates an authentic look. The owner of our local print shop downtown has come to know me as I am always coming in with unusual requests, finding a good print shop who is willing to accommodate and use paper that you are bringing in can be key. So moving to the project, this project takes your print and goes the extra mile. Not only is the texture of your paper important, but the presence of brush strokes or lack thereof is a really big indicator as to whether or not the piece is original. Luckily, I've got the solution to change that. Just a little precursor, you will need to have printed your PDF on thicker paper. You normally won't have this extra step that you see me doing, but if you happen to have a print that is already pre-framed and you're unable to take it apart, I'd recommend taping the frame. If you're able to, to make sure there is extra protection, I like to slide the tape underneath the frame and wrap it around the top. So it's super hard to see the difference between the print and the original, but original paintings have so much character with the texture. I love being able to see every single brush stroke that the artist had made. You can see here, this is a vintage original. I love all the wear and tear and the textural elements of it. All these little characteristics, prints just simply lack, but we're going to fix that. For this project, all you need is a paintbrush, of course, your print of choice, and clear matte Mod Podge. Side note, if you really want to follow my lead to a T, make sure you spill the Mod Podge all over your fingers. And next comes the fun part. Simply dip your brush into the Mod Podge and follow the lead of the artist. Make your brush strokes in accordance with theirs. I like to add the Mod Podge in layers. I start with the background and then I go to whatever is next. Pretty much follow the order of the artist. Depending on the look that you are going for, you are wanting to do several layers, wait for the first layer to dry, and then move on. I have found that one way to save time as far as how many layers you have to paint is by allowing the Mod Podge to dry a little bit to the point of it thickening up and then begin to paint. Something about this project is just so relaxing. It's super simple, affordable, doesn't take very long, and in the end, it is just more than worth it. As I said previously, it's really hard for the camera to pick up all the strokes, but looking at these pieces in person, they are indistinguishable from original pieces of art. So if you are an art lover like I am, but not so much in love with the prices, I'd recommend you give this one a try. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, I appreciate you so much. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comment section below. I absolutely love hearing any feedback and I look forward to any ideas that you may have for future content. As we speak, Iris June and I are just about to head off to create more. So keep an eye out for that. If you hit the notification, it's always helpful if you don't want to miss any 
future posts. Until then, I hope you have a great night, evening, day, morning, whatever time it is. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, we'll see you soon.